Hello, folks. Welcome back. Dr. Ken Berry here, hanging out with you on a Saturday afternoon. If you're watching this on the replay, um, we have some moderators who try to go through and answer questions. So you can still type your question in, even if you're not catching this live. And uh, still free, feel free to, to share this in your groups or on your page if you think it'll help improve someone's health. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. I've been practicing family medicine uninterrupted since the year 2001. Graduated medical school in 2000 and did my internship. Uh, we've got a couple of questions here I wanted to answer. Paul says, Doc, would you recommend another medicine to go along with metformin to lower my high glucose and insulin levels? No, Paul, I would recommend that you keep lowering your daily carbohydrate intake. I know this light from this window may be bugging some of you guys. I'm going to try to. Let's try this. There. Is that better? I know, I know some things bother some people more than other people. Is that better? Yeah. So, Paul, yeah, you don't need another medicine. You need to keep cutting your carbohydrate intake. If you're currently low carb, go keto. If you're currently keto, go ketovore. If you're currently ketovore, go carnivore for 90 days. You are going to completely reverse your type 2 diabetes, your hyperglycemia, and your hyperinsulinemia by doing this. And then you can start to play around and experiment and see if you can add back in some keto-friendly carbs or if you need to keep it as close to zero carb as possible. <laughs> Kathy wants to know what NAC is. Kathy, uh, there's this thing now called Google. You can look all this stuff up. Not being mean, just saying. I got lots of questions. If it's something you can Google, uh, then Google it. If there's something that you think I've maybe made a YouTube video, like, I wonder if keto is good for high blood pressure then go to YouTube and search Dr. Berry high blood pressure. And if I have a video, which I do, I have about seven or eight about high blood pressure, it'll pop up and you can watch it. CB something. Are keto chow daily minerals okay for someone with stage three kidney disease? Yeah, there's nothing in the keto chow's daily mineral drops that's going to harm any human being who has stage three kidney function or better. So if you have stage four, stage five, you might want to take it to your nephrologist appointment and clear it with them. But if you have stage three kidney uh, disease or better than that, all the way back up to normal kidney function, you can take uh, a dose of that every day, get all your minerals that you need every day. And if you get just a little bit too much of one mineral or another, you will urinate it away. It will not cause any harm. Ah, hello, Colorado. Where are you guys watching from? Where are you at in the world right now? What city, what state, what country? Tell me who I'm dealing with here. Here's a, a Bulgarian in New Jersey. Wow, what a combo. I love it. Dan, Dana's in the Czech Republic. Nice. Sherry's from Sherry Zimmerman. Hey, Sherry from Hornwall. That's one of my old neighbors. Wow, small world, huh, Sherry? Oh, let's see. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Ohio, Tampa, Florida, Winston, Salem, North Carolina. That's not the name of a cigarette. That's the name of a town. So don't be triggered by Winston, Salem. It's actually a North Carolina city. Abu Dhabi. Hey, Glacy. Somebody's from Cuba, Missouri. Mary M from London, Paul from Ireland. Hey guys, welcome. Uh, if you have a friend or a family member who always forgets to catch my lives, send them a text message right now and remind them. Send them a direct message. Uh, share this on their Facebook. Say, hey, he's live right now. You're missing it. What are you doing? Uh, let's see. Brian says, Monday is the Monday the 24th is my carnivorsary. 100 pounds lost for good. So Brian's been carnivore for one year and has lost 100 pounds. Anybody else have a similar keto, ketovore, carnivore story? I love it when you put your stories in the comments. 
Kelly B says, what are your thoughts on aluminum foil for cooking? I cook my bacon in the oven and usually cover the cookie sheet with foil. Is it unhealthy? I am very uncomfortable about my, my food or drink above room temperature coming into contact with aluminum. That worries me. Aluminum has a relatively low melting point. I think it's about a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and the, the closer you get to that melting point, point, the more atoms of aluminum are, are going to start to sublimate and actually break away from the aluminum container and potentially get into your food or drink. Uh, I think keeping stuff in aluminum at room temperature or lower is probably perfectly safe and fine. But I would, I, we don't have a single aluminum cooking pan in this house. I won't allow it. Uh, it makes me uncomfortable. Aluminum has a way of, of getting into body tissues that it absolutely should not be in. And that worries me greatly, uh, especially with uh, little Beckett Berry, all of my Berry children, and then a new Berry, Berry baby on the way. I don't need any aluminum um, sticking itself in any young developing brains whatsoever. Same goes for plastic. Never do we cook or heat or put hot food or hot liquid in plastic containers ever, ever, ever. Um, there, there are definite reasons why, but yeah, I, I would never cook on aluminum foil, uh, Kelly B. I just wouldn't do it. There, there are a thousand other ways that definitely are not going to harm you. Cooking glass, cooking stainless steel, cooking cast iron, cooking things that have a melting point in the in the thousands, two, three, four, or five thousand degrees. And you know that when you're cooking at 400 degrees, you're not going to be sublimating very many of those away. And then if you sublimate an iron atom out of the cast iron skillet and the iron atom gets in your body, congratulations. That's good. You needed the iron anyway, probably. Mm. Check this out. Nisha just made unsweet tea, like sun tea or um, iced tea. It's so freaking good. I think she's going to make a video on her YouTube channel. Uh, if you don't follow her, it's Nisha Loves It, N-E-I-S-H-A. And also, um, I bought her the, little, the ice maker that makes the little crunchy ice. And she said, of all the things we have, that is the ultimate luxury. So um, if, you, if you want the ultimate luxury, you need to get Nisha's crunchy ice machine, ice maker machine. Yep. All right, let's see what we got. <clears throat> I answered Kelly B. Ed Rosen says, have you ever been threatened or warned to stop your anti-sugar or pro-keto message? Not directly, but uh, some of you guys may not know this story. <clears throat> About four or three years ago, I had a, a, a very, very active, bustling family practice clinic. Uh, it was a two-story building on the Court Square in Camden, Tennessee that was built in 1905. I had basically taken an empty hull of a building and turn, turned it into the closest thing to a medical Taj Mahal that, that um, I have ever seen. I, I tried really hard to make it very comfortable and make you feel at home. And uh, we were super busy seeing anywhere from 30 to 50 people a day. And after I had started my Facebook page and YouTube channel, I uh, kind of got some weird messages and some not, not direct threats, but, but just veiled weird cryptic pseudo threats. And then all of a sudden at um, four o'clock, 4 a.m. one morning, I got a call or 5 a.m., that said, hey, your your office is on fire. And so I rushed to Camden. I lived about, what, 15 miles away. And uh, by the time I got there, it was completely engulfed and burned virtually to the ground. And uh, <clears throat> Tennessee Fire and Arson came and investigated it and uh, said undetermined causes. We can't, we can't detect any cause for this. Definitely not a short, definitely not a you know, there was a, a, a storm that night, so maybe lightning, but there's no evidence of that. It just burned down, and which is weird. And then less than six months later, my house where Nisha and I were living, we were in the process of, of moving to Nashville. Uh, we had an apartment in Nashville already, 
and we had moved just a few things there. 99% of our stuff was still in the house. It caught on fire one evening and burned completely to the ground while we were in Nashville. And as you can imagine, fire and arson uh, was like, uh, that's weird. And so they brought out, I think, 16 agents and a porta potty and, and basically lived there for the next five days. And they sifted everything with a fine tooth comb. When, when they were finished, you could literally have eaten off the concrete slab. They had investigated so thoroughly and cleaned so thoroughly. And the cause was undetermined cause. Which <clears throat> two fires, undetermined cause that caused complete destruction within six months time. And so there were several people in the keto community who immediately jumped to uh, that's too weird to be coincidence. Uh, we, we don't have any evidence that there was any foul play, but I mean, come on, you know? So, but no, I've never received a direct threat threat. If you don't shut up, I'm going to burn your office down. No, I've never received anything like that. Thanks for the super chat. Ed Tracy says my blood pressure readings are 136 over 92 and 139 over 94. And my doctor wants me to take medication to lower it. Is medication necessary if I'm doing ketovore and carnivore? Maybe, Tracy. I need you to get a blood pressure cuff that checks on the upper arm and check your blood pressure when you're calm and relaxed at home. I'm working on a YouTube video right now entitled, You May Not Even Have High Blood Pressure. Because the average primary care doctor, when you go in to see them and they check your blood pressure and it's high and you you were stuck in traffic, you didn't eat breakfast, you're half pissed off, you had to wait, they're running late, and then they check your blood pressure and they're shocked when it's high. And they literally will diagnose you with hypertension from that one blood pressure reading that is completely inappropriate. That is a, it's malpractice, in my opinion, to put you on a prescription pharmaceutical blood pressure medicine for that. Uh, you don't. So, Tracy, you probably don't have high blood pressure if you start checking it at home when you're calm and relaxed. All of the blood pressure research was done. Uh, they would have people sit in a, a dark, quiet room for 15 minutes and chillax. Then they would check their blood pressure. That's an actual real blood pressure reading. Uh, rushing into your doctor's office, checking in, getting jerked around, uh, and then getting stuck in a chair and checking your blood pressure while you're still short of breath. That is not a real blood pressure do not ever let a doctor prescribe you a blood pressure medication based on that reading in their office. You need multiple readings, days apart, where you are you are calm and quiet and cool and collected and chillaxed. If those numbers are high repetitively, <clears throat> then you have high blood pressure currently, which is very often reversible. I'd say about 90% of the time people can reverse their hypertension, their essential hypertension by eating a proper human diet, uh, keto, ketovore, carnivore. But uh, until you have reversed it, you might need a, a low dose of a blood pressure medicine to decrease your risk of heart attack and stroke. But you got to get a real blood pressure check first, right? Hey, Paola, does that make sense? You cannot take prescription medication based on a blood pressure that was hurriedly rushed at a doctor's office, even if they're like, oh, we'll repeat it in five minutes, and, it, and then it's still high in five minutes, still inappropriate, still not a, tr a true blood pressure reading. You still should not be prescribed a pharmaceutical to lower your blood pressure based on that. Hope that helps, Tracy. Uh, E-bike, eat, meat, repeat. I've been carnivore for almost a year on the 25th of February. Feel amazing. Chronic heart arrhythmia is gone and psoriasis is almost completely gone. Is it normal for my farts to smell acidic? Some people, some carnivores farts smell acidic. Some carnivores farts smell not at all. Uh, Misha and I, we can't even tell when each other farts anymore. It's like literally if it's silent, nobody knows it happened because there's just, there's no smell. But then some people will still have a little poop smell or acidic smell. That's, that's, it's fine. There's a, there's a, a standard distribution curve of normal. Some, some carnivores have no smell to their uh, flatulence. Some have a little bit of smell left, but no, I, I've never met a carnivore that says, oh my God, my farts can clear the room like they used to. Virtually every carnivore I've ever talked to said, my farts just don't stink nearly as bad as they used to. Is that normal? Yeah, it's very, we, we hear that very commonly. Uh, but congrats on getting rid of the psoriasis. This is something that um, 
that carnivore, keto, ketovore, carnivore can all improve your psoriasis to the point where it actually can go completely away. This is very common. I made a psoriasis, hundreds of comments of people saying my psoriasis is 70% better, 80, 90, it's gone, 95% better, 90% better. That's the kind of stuff that you can expect from eating a proper human diet. And it's not because the diet has something magic included in it. It's because when you're eating a proper human diet, you're not poisoning your body with inflammatory crap that will cause your immune system to start attacking you. That's why it works. Okay. There's nothing magic in the meat. What you've done is you've stopped adding inflammatory, insulin spiking, blood sugar spiking things. That's what you've done. Okay. Hmm. Nisha, you need to make a video about how to make this tea. This is delish. She said, okay. <laughs> Terry Stone, I am 437 pounds and worried. You should be. My doctor recommends surgery, but I'm not sure. Would the keto diet help more? Keto diet's going to help just as much, Terry, but the, the keto diet's not going to have all the potentially life-destroying side effects as bariatric surgery is going to have. Any surgical procedure has a list of potential complications. And if you're having a ruin why, then you, you're basically permanently mutilating your gastrointestinal system permanently for the rest of your life. And you will always have to go out of your way to mind your minerals and get your vitamins and get amino acids and fatty acids because you have chopped out a large portion of your um nutrient absorbing small intestine and stomach. And so you, it's just, you're, you never have a normal gut again, if you have bar some of the bariatric surgeries. So I would 100% Terry, I would, I would recommend strongly that you do 90 days of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. You can eat as many times a day as you want. You can eat as big a portion size as you want beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Do that for 90 days. Don't eat anything else. Drink water, unsweetened coffee or unsweetened tea, nothing else. The water can be still or sparkling. Do that for 90 days. And at the end of that 90 days, Terry, you'll have your answer because you will have lost a lot of fat. And you will have hope at that point. Hey, I think I can do this completely on my own without surgery. So many people have done it. Uh, just check out the comments on some of my weight loss videos on, on YouTube. It's amazing what people have done when they stop poisoning their bodies with too many carbohydrates, too many uh, grains, too much sugar, too many vegetable seed oils. When you remove those things from your diet, it's almost magic what your body can do. But what most people don't understand, and it's one of the concepts of a proper human diet, one of the principles, is that the, the baseline status of the human body is healthy. That's normal. Healthy is the normal baseline of a human body that has not been poisoned or raised in a bad environment or raised eating a, a junky, shit-filled standard American diet. The human body is just, by definition, a healthy, vibrant organism unless you poison it, unless you shackle it, unless you beat it down. And so... So many, that's what happens when people stop eating the inflammatory blood sugar spiking diet and they start eating a proper human diet. It's not, there's nothing magic in the PhD. It's just that you've stopped poisoning your body and you've given it a chance to heal. And man, Terry, heal does it. It heals fast. You start burning all of the, the unnecessary, unhealthy fat that you've got stored. Uh, the, when you're, if you implement some intermittent fasting, which is also absolutely part of a proper human diet, you start to increase the rate of autophagy. So you're tightening up your skin. Uh, if you've got fat stored in your liver, in your pancreas, around your heart, and your, even in your lungs or your kidneys, that fat is immediately burned up and, and gotten rid of. Here comes FedEx. All right. FedEx claws and UPS claws and, USPS clause. Those are the three Santas that come to our house every day. What about you? But that's what's that's what's going to happen for you, Terry. And then at the end of that 90 days, if you haven't lost any weight, then you need to have bariatric surgery because there's something wrong with your physiology. But I predict at the end of 90 days of beef, butter, 
bacon and eggs, as much as you want, as many times a day as you want it, you're going to get on the scales and say, what the hell? How did I just lose that much weight eating meat and eggs? Let me know, Terry. Keep me up to date on how that goes. Thank you for the super chat, Elizabeth. <clears throat> Thank you, Vixen, for the super chat. Let's see. Yes, Nomad Joe says, hit the like button. Please do that. That helps get this message out there. There's so many people in the world who are suffering with obesity or fatty liver or type 2 diabetes or hypertension or psoriasis or all the things that are linked to metabolic syndrome, prediabetes, hyperinsulinemia. Sharing one of my videos, hitting that like button, sending a small super chat, becoming a patron on patreon.com. Those little acts of, of rebellion, those little acts of defiance that say, you know what? I don't give a damn what diet the federal government recommends. I don't give a damn what the American Diabetes Association recommends. I know what really worked for me, and I know what's going to work for my friends and my family and my neighbors, and that's what I'm going to support. I'm not going to support and or a, a, whether through my, my voice or through my silence. I'm not going to support a diet that I know led to me being metabolically sick and obese. I'm going to start to protect my friends and family from that by speaking out. And that speaking out can be verbally, for sure, share your story. If you've used a proper human diet to, to transform your health, you never need to shut up about that, okay? Everybody who knew the you before and can see the you of today, they're going to be naturally curious, and they're going to be like, dude, what the hell did you do? You look great. Then you're going to tell them, right? If you keep your mouth shut, you didn't help anybody. And I think we're all put here to help people. I think that's why we're all here. In one way or another, we're put here to help people. So help me help people by sharing your story, which is the most powerful story you'll ever have. If you want to share my videos, if you want to do, if you want to leave comments, if you want to hit the thumbs up button, all that stuff helps. All that helps. Okay. So whatever, whatever part you can play, you can help me. We all together, we can change the world. We can wipe out huge pharmaceutical corporations, huge big food corporations who shouldn't even exist. We can help them find new work. They need to be doing productive jobs. They need to be making society a better place. And currently, they ain't doing that. But you and I together, we can help them to do that. What did I get? Is it something good? Second gym mat thing. Oh, <clears throat> we got Becky Berry a gym mat. <clears throat> he thinks he's Spider-Man lately. You should see. Have you videoed this? No. You should see the antics. He runs through the house and he does, you know, the Spider-Man pose where he's like in a semi-split, he's, he's been doing that. So I thought before we broke a collarbone, I should maybe get him a gymnastics mat. Crypto Bull, the proper human diet reversed my diabetes in six months. It's been 18 months now, and I went from an A1C of 9.3 down to 4.3. Think about that for a minute, folks. How many years have you been on diabetic medications? right? One, two, three, four medications. Maybe even insulin is a type two diabetic and your A1C is still high. You still feel like shit. You've still, you're still on all these other medicines for all these other symptoms. Crypto bull decreased his or her A1C from 9.3 to 4.3, which is approaching perfection with a proper human diet. And I don't know if it was keto, ketovore, or carnivore, and I don't care because all of them are a species appropriate, appropriate proper human diet. They, they have been eaten successfully by, our, by ancestors in the past for millions of years. Meat and veg, lots of meat and a little veg, all meat and no veg. All these diets have been tried by, by our ancestors for millennia, successfully tried, right? And as you may know, there's not a there's not a society <clears throat> in in our past that anthropology's ever found that ate a vegan diet that was a successful society. Never happened. Now they may have eaten lots of plants, but they always ate fish. They always ate meat. They always ate eggs because you got to do that, or you will develop deficiency, right? And we have a great example from the Egyptian culture. 
They were, unless you were a, a, a prisoner or a pauper, you got mummified to some degree. Everybody in the Egyptian society, if you were anybody from, from a lower class, just a blue collar worker, say, all the way up to the top, you got some degree of mummification. And then the arid, low humidity desert that you were buried in preserved your body very well. And so we've got CAT scans on hundreds, if not thousands of Egyptians now. And they ate a diet. They ate actually, literally ate the same diet that, that we're instructed to eat today. The My Plate guidelines, the um, uh, Eat Lancet guidelines. The Egyptians ate lots of whole grains and they weren't eating modern GMO. They were eating ancient emmer wheat, right? It was no, no GM, GMOs. They were eating lots of grain. Some, they ate so many grains, so much bread that they were actually known as the bread people by other cultures that lived then. They ate lots of fruit. They ate lots of honey. Sugar hadn't been invented yet, so they definitely were not eating lots of candy, cookie, cakes, and pies. They were not eating lots of highly processed junk food. But yet, when we did the CAT scans on these mummies, from in all socioeconomic status, they all had terrible teeth. Lots of cavities, lots of dental abscesses. They all had very brittle, weak bones. They all had severe coronary artery disease. But they were eating the diet that's recommended for us. The plant-based, whole grain, lots of fruits and veg. Lot, you know, that's, that's literally the diet they're eating. So we know we have examples of a plant-based whole grain diet. It doesn't work. Any, a proper human diet should be nutritionally complete. You should be able to eat this and not have to take a handful of supplements. Again, like a vegan diet, even the vegan gurus, uh, the vegan influencers like Dr. Greger, he's got a, a blog post about all the supplements that you should consider taking as a vegan. And if you're, uh, you're going to eat a vegan diet, I, I'll still love you. But yeah, you need a handful of supplements every day to keep from developing deficiencies. Now, that obviously cannot be a proper human diet. You may consider veganism to be ethical and moral and, and, a, and a, a modern even, and that's fine, but it's not a proper human diet, okay? I think it's fine to live a modern life, but you're going to have to eat an ancient diet if you want optimal health. A proper human diet improves your health overall, right? It returns your health to baseline. And so uh, a proper human diet is going to reverse hypertension in 80 or 90 percent of people. It's going to reverse type 2 diabetes in 95 to 100 percent of people. It's going to reverse pre-diabetes in 95 to 99 percent of people. It's going to improve psoriasis to at least some degree in 80 to 90 percent of people. When you go from the standard American junk diet, the my plate diet, the ADA diet, the AHA diet, to a proper human diet that's either keto, ketovore, or carnivore, you're going to improve all of these chronic medical conditions that you thought were progressive. That in fact, they're just slow, they're evidence of slow poison from the inflammatory junk of your previous diet. The Bearded Dad. Thanks for the super chat, my friend. Thank you very much. Sound and video are fine. Let's see if we can find any other testimonials of how a proper human diet has transformed your health. It can be prediabetes, diabetes, hypertension. It can be fatty liver. It can be a skin condition, a joint condition. Agent 47 lost 150 pounds doing ketovore. Ketovore is typically de, uh, defined as less than 10 total grams of carbohydrates a day. So you're eating lots of meat and eggs and a little bit of veg or just a few berries or just a few nuts. But the vast majority of your plate is covered with meat and eggs. How awesome is that? 150 pounds. Hey, Charles Bronson. Good afternoon. Do you recommend taking Lugol's iodine even on a PhD every day and how much? Yeah. So great question. Iodine is not a vitamin. Iodine is a mineral. It is an element, right? <clears throat> and so there are multiple elements that are either in the soil that your food grow in or grew, grew in, or it's the elements have to be in the soil that, that made the plants that your food ate. That's how you get minerals. The minerals are not created nor destroyed by the soil, by the grass, 
the plants, or by the animals. None of these things can make a mineral, just like they can make vitamins. All of these things can make vitamins. The bacteria in the soil can make vitamins. The grass and plants can, can make vitamins. The animals can make vitamins. But none of these things can make minerals. The minerals are either in the soil or they're not. And so much of our soil in modern society has been mismanaged and misformed that a lot of the minerals are either locked up in the soil and, and you can't get them out or they're just not no longer there. And that's why I created daily minerals with keto chow so that you've got all these daily minerals that you can take one little dose. You get all your daily minerals. If you need them, your body uses them. If you don't need them, you pee them out. And I, that that's out of an abundance of caution and just a better safe than sorry. That's why I recommend this, at least for a while, Charles. Now, some people use Lugol's iodine 2%. I think that's fine to start out with. Once you've used a bottle of that, one or two drops a day, and you've, re, you've repleted your iodine, then there's a little bit, there's about 500 micrograms of iodine in each serving of, of daily minerals. That's enough to keep you going from now on, plus the iodine in your food. And so uh, very many of us, once we, like Nisha and I are currently in the process, we inherit her grandfather's farm. We're in the process of rehabilitating the soil, rehabilitating the grass. We've got ruminant animals rotating all over this farm. We've got chickens and turkeys eating and pooping all over this farm, right? And in doing so, uh, I'm feeding the sheep minerals. It's not these daily minerals, it's sheep daily minerals. But every time they poop, they're pooping out about 50% to 70% of those minerals that they ate in their mineral supplement onto the pasture. And so in a few years, all of this pasture, all this farm is going to be replete with the minerals that should be in the soil to start with. And at that point, Nisha and I and, and our family and whoever we choose to feed with the food that we grow on this, this ranch, this farm, they're not going to need to supplement with anything except maybe in the winter, they might need to supplement with some vitamin D. That's literally it. Uh, but from the from the fat of these grass fed, grass finished sheep and eventually cattle, they're going to be getting omega threes from the egg yolks. They're going to be getting their omega threes, and then also making their own omega threes by eating a proper human diet. They're going to be getting all the minerals because they're back in the soil, and and they're in a form where we can actually get them out of the soil. But currently, many people, depending on where their food is grown, where it comes from they probably need to mine their minerals and uh, do some kind of mineral supplementation and perhaps one or two vitamins currently, uh, vitamin D, depending on the time of year. Thank you, Charles. Tia says, I've eaten carnivore for a while with no gallbladder. I have no issues. <clears throat> See, some people, when they start keto or carnivore without a gallbladder, they'll have some bloating and diarrhea for a few weeks, but it's going to go away if you just stick with it. You can absolutely eat keto, ketovore, carnivore without a gallbladder. 100% in Tia's living proof. I recently had an appendectomy and now loose bowel movements for months. Help. Yeah. And this happens. That's why I want all you guys to keep your gallbladder if you can. Keep your appendix at if you can. There's actually a new research study out that I'm working on a YouTube video about appendicitis. In the past, doctors thought if you developed appendicitis, 100% your appendix had to come out. Well, turns out that's not true. If the if the doctor gets you started on antibiotics before your appendix ruptures, uh, eighty or ninety percent of the time you can keep your appendix. And I'm gonna I'll be posting that video in a few days and the research along with it. Now, if your appendix is ruptured, you got to take it out currently. But if it's just if you just have appendicitis and it's unruptured and you're stable otherwise. The doctor does not have to take your appendix out. So I'm sorry that you had an appendectomy, Tia. Uh, the loose stool should resolve. The One of the many functions of the vermiform appendix is that it is a repository for good bacteria. That's where your body kind of, it's kind of the bacterial library, right? And I'm sure, I have no doubt the appendix um, serves other functions that we just don't know about yet. The appendix seems to be a vestigial leftover from the big cecums that we used to possess six million years ago, back when we were plant eaters. We had to have a much larger large intestine and cecum in order to break down all the cellulose. But uh, for the last at least three, 
three and a half million years, we've been meat eaters. And we didn't need that big cecum, but we did need a bigger brain. So we got rid of that cecum and turned it into an appendix. Uh, and But I'm, I, I, I'm very confident that it serves many purposes. But your uh, diarrhea should get better as, as weeks go by to you. It should not be permanent. Yeah, Danielle, many people look back now after they hear my criteria for having your gallbladder out, which would be a gallbladder that is ruptured by trauma, a gallbladder that is infected, cholangitis, or a gallbladder that has a, uh, a gallstone stuck in the cystic duct and is building up pressure. Those are the three times you need your gallbladder out. You never take a gallbladder out for gallbladder dysfunction. That is malpractice. You never take a gallbladder out just because you have a stone in your gallbladder. That is never an indication. You do not take a gallbladder out just because you have sludge in the gallbladder. All of these are, will eventually will be considered malpractice. Mark my word, five or 10 years from now, a surgeon will be uh, called before the review board if they take out a gallbladder just because somebody had right upper quadrant pain or gallbladder sludge or a, a stone in their gallbladder. Those are not indications to take a gallbladder out. Yeah, Dan's a great question. Said, what does the appendix do? It does many things, okay? Uh, for years and years, most surgeons thought that it did nothing and that it was just a troublemaker. We need to go ahead and take it out. Actually, there's a, a an island in the Antarctic where if you're going to go there and work as a scientist or be a member of a scientist family, you have to have your appendix taken out before you go there because that damn pesky, worthless appendix is just up to no good. And you're probably going to have appendicitis while you're down there. And then you'll have to have a helicopter ride two or 300 miles to the nearest ER. Um, that, that is old thinking. That is not scientific thinking. That is, uh, that is uh, magical thinking of, of surgeons from decades past. Yeah, Paola says they took hers out for no no reason, literally. And so uh, back in the 70s, sur general surgeons, I used to know one. I loved him to death. He was a great guy, but this is true. They would, if they went in to get your appendix, they'd go ahead and get your gallbladder while they were in there. Or if they got your gallbladder, they'd get your appendix just so they didn't have to go back. They, they would go ahead and send a bill to the insurance company for taking both out. And back then, the insurance company didn't ask questions. They just paid the bill. But uh, these surgeons would take out multiple body organs. So if you were getting a hysterectomy, while the surgeon was in there, they'd go ahead and get your appendix just so they didn't have to come back later. But they'd also bill for it, right? Yeah, lots of lots of foolishness like that. That that is in no way scientific thinking because they didn't know what the hell they were doing back then. They were fumbling around in the dark. Oh, let's see. Thank you, Bobby, for the super chat. Caesar says, I wish I can have you as my personal doctor. I can't seem to get a grip on the keto diet. Caesar, let me tell you, if you'd like to ask me questions directly, you can actually do that through a platform called patreon.com. Uh, there's a link down in the show notes and you can sign up and become a $3 a month, $5 a month, $20 a month patron and support the work I'm doing. But also you have access to me. You can ask me your direct questions. Uh, we have three extra live Q&As in there each and every week. Uh, one, one Zoom call and two Crowdcasts lives every week. And the patrons can ask me every question that they have about their health, their nutrition, their medications, their, their lifestyle, their activity, their sleep, all that stuff we discuss every single week in those three additional lives. And instead of having 1,700 people like I do right now, there's 170 people. So I'm able to answer every question in much more detail. So become a patron if you want to support the work I do or become a patron if you'd like to ask me your questions about your personal situation. I'm still uh, practicing family medicine, but I have a very small patient uh, population. It's, it's just basically about 50 friends and patients who I've been taking care of for 10 to 20 years and they, they basically told me they'd rather die than go see another doctor. So after the clinic fire, I continued to care for these people. And But I'm not currently taking new patients, but you can have access to my opinion on Patreon.com. Oh. Danny says, how much water intake? Been on keto for 20 years, been a confusing subject. Dan, so how much water should you drink a day for optimal health? 
so many gurus have an opinion about this. There literally is not a shred of research that proves that you should drink any amount of water a day. When you're thirsty, drink water until you're no longer thirsty, then stop drinking. That is literally the state of the art on water ingestion. Uh, any guru who tells you you should drink a specific quantity of water every day based on your body weight in pounds or kilograms is full of shit. What they're recommending to you is based on no real science whatsoever. And you can hit the unfollow button right then because you know if they say, oh, you should drink your weight in ounces in water. Mm, 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 this is this is bullshit. There's not a shred of evidence. The eight glasses of water a day had nothing. That was not a recommendation of how much water you should drink a day. This was research that was looking into how much water do human beings ingest a day in their liquids and in their foods together. And it averaged out to about eight, eight glasses a day. That's where the eight glasses a day came from. That was never a recommendation based on any science. But then dumbass gurus and influencers picked it up and said, oh, you should drink eight glasses of water every day for your best health. Full of shit. No research. No truth. It, it's, it is a made-up pseudo-fact. I shit you not. Look it up. Okay? But anybody who tells you you should drink a gallon of water, two liters of water, three liters, this is all Foolish, busy work. They do not know what they were talking about. You can stop listening to them immediately about that and probably everything else they're saying. If they're so ignorant, which means lacking in facts, if they're so ignorant that they're recommending you drink a gallon or two liters of water every day, if they think that is science, sciency, then what else do they just not know? I'm sure they have good intentions, but they're dumb and they don't know what they're talking about. I'm sorry to be blunt, but yeah. Good question, Danny. Christy says, I'm a patron. Are those uh, Q&As recorded? Yes. The, the, um, we have two Crowdcast lives, uh, one on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central, one on Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central, and then we have on 6 p.m. Uh, Wednesday, we have the Zoom call, and they're all recorded and they're all available for watching later if you are uh, a $3 patron or up. You have access to watch those later, Christy. So thank you for the super chat. And yes, ma'am. Uh, Sherry says, severe back pain and loss of smell due to the big C virus after strict egg yolks, bone marrow, and ghee has helped 100%. The Proper Human Diet Patreon is amazing. Oh, thank you, Sherry. Sherry's a patron. Thank you very much for that, Sherry. Cameron says, just added you to my Patreon list. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you very much. Keep being awesome, Dr. Barry. Thanks for the live event. My pleasure. And like I said, there's three extra lives with a, a much lower amount of people watching and asking questions so that I'm able to answer questions in much greater detail, Cameron. So welcome to our Patreon tribe. And I think you're going to be glad that you joined. Oh, let's see what's going on, guys. Now's the chance if you got questions. Phyllis says, thank you on the water. I've been drinking so much. Yeah, so many people. My, my youngest daughter, Abby Grace Berry, is very smart, but she heard some guru say you should drink this many ounces a day. So she literally had her big water jug just duct taped to her hand. Anytime you saw her, she had her water bottle. And uh, this can actually be harmful for your kidneys. Drinking unnecessary water that your body does not want or need, that your thirst mechanism, which is hardwired, is not telling you you need, just forcing water. Uh, that's dumb. That can actually uh, stress your kidneys. So please stop doing that if you've been doing that. Jay Roos says, what foods should I avoid if I have anxiety? You should avoid all sugars, Jay, all grains, all vegetable seed oils. You should eat as much fatty meat and eggs as you can hold. If you want some veg, that's fine. If you want a few berries, that's fine. If you want a few nuts, that's fine. But the majority of your food should be meat, fatty meat and eggs. And you will notice some degree of improvement in your anxiety. Some people, their anxiety goes completely away on a proper human diet. 
Some people it gets 50% better and they no longer have to take prescription medication for their anxiety. How amazing would that be, right? Thank you, Leonard, for the super chat. Thank you, Dark Magus. KC says, I will be joining Patreon. Thank you, KC. I can't wait to see you in there. It's this really cool, private, protected community where it, it's kind of like a Facebook group in that we can all interact. There's a community tab, but you don't have the Facebook monster over your shoulder collecting, you know, vacuuming up all your data and selling it to people. It's very cool. Very cool. Very private. Very protected. Uh, very close knit tribe. Yeah, Cameron says, Meditarians unite, 100%. 100%. There are so many memes out there. And uh, the vegan diet, make no mistake, is a meme, okay? It is not based on any credible science showing causation. A vegan diet has never been shown to cause an improvement in health. It's never been shown to prevent. It's shown to be a cause of prevention. It's all observational. It's all, it's all a meme. But there are so many people who believe that meme is true and they're harming their health. And so, yeah, meditarians, we got to start helping the rest of the human species because so many of them are misled. Oh, let's see. Somebody, somebody asked about Splenda. They had been told that it was zero calories, zero carbs. And Splenda is 100% not zero calorie. That is a lie. Okay. Now, sucralose, the way it's made in the chemical factory, it is zero calorie, zero carb. But Splenda adds dextrose. Do you know the other word for dextrose? Glucose. What is glucose? It is sugar. Splenda contains sugar. It also contains maltodextrin, which is another form of sugar. So Splenda, the name brand Splenda, contains sucralose, which is zero calorie. And it also contains sugar and then sugar. So <laughs> Splenda, I don't even know how, uh, the, the way they're able to get away with it is because of their serving size. The federal government says that if you have less than five calories per serving size, then you can call your food a zero calorie food. And so they give you these tiny little portions of Splenda and say, oh, it's zero calorie. And it's a big, fat lie. It's a meme. People, so many people out there believe the meme that Splenda is zero calorie, zero carb. And it's a lie. It's a literal, provable lie. You can just look up what are the ingredients of Splenda. And there's dextrose. Look up dextrose. Look up the Wikipedia. See how many calories it has per gram. Then look up maltodextrin. Oh, that's in, that's in Splenda. How many calories does it have per gram? Boom. Splenda has about three calories per gram. 3.2, I think. It is not zero calorie. It's not zero carb. All the calories in Splenda are from sugar, so therefore carbs. But so many people believe this, and they just use an stevia of Splenda and everything. Splenda, Splenda, Splenda. And they're, eat, they're probably eating 20 to 30 grams of carbs a day just from the damn dextrose and maltodextrin in Splenda. This is one of the things that we've got to stamp out, especially for people we care about, our, our friends, our family, our neighbors. They believe this stupid shit. And they don't, they're not dumb. They just don't know better. They saw a Splenda commercial and just bought it, hook, line, and sinker. And they don't know any better. And they won't know any better until you teach them that Splenda is damn sure not a zero-calorie food. It's not a zero-carb food. It's sugar, literal sugar. Splenda is sugar. <sighs> Natasha says, what are your thoughts on keto ratio yogurt? I have kind of an unpopular uh, opinion about this kind of stuff, Natasha. I, When I use the word keto, my definition of keto is... One ingredient, whole foods that either grew in the dirt, from the dirt, or ate something that grew from the dirt. If I, I think that if you make your own yogurt at home out of full fat dairy, it's probably fine. 
to eat that. But anytime somebody else makes your yogurt, makes your sour cream, makes your uh, Neuf Chatel, any of that, they're going to cut corners because it's human nature to make a profit. And it's not going to be, in my opinion, no longer part of the proper human diet, no longer part of keto, keto or carnivore. Okay. That's food that grew, that you picked it. Or food that, that, that you had slaughtered, that had eaten the plants. Meat, veg, berries, nuts. That is the totality of the proper human diet. Now, I think milk fat, butter and ghee are fine, but for the, for the vast majority of human adults, dairy proteins are inflammatory and definitely lactose, the milk sugar, is inflammatory for over two-thirds to three-quarters of human beings on the planet. They are lactose intolerant. It is weird if you can tolerate lactose. It is not normal. It is because it's the it's but it, the reason you can tolerate lactose is because of a genetic defect, and it is very rare. Uh, only about seven thirty uh, percent of human beings on the planet can tolerate lactose. That doesn't make it okay. And so, just because you can tolerate it, do you think that means it's optimal for you? Because I would say no, it's not. You can tolerate a tiny amount of rat poison every day, but that's not going to give you your best health, is it? but you can tolerate it. So if you're lactose tolerant, uh, don't brag about that. Don't abuse that. Realize that does not mean that's your optimal diet. That just means you have a genetic defect that allows you to tolerate that. I would get that out of my diet, and I would I would eliminate most of the dairy uh, protein from my diet. Butter and ghee are fine. It's, it's a very healthy fat that with a modern lifestyle, we're able to get out of the dairy. There And uh, you've heard me say, I'll give you an example. This is how I think. So you've heard me say before, if milk was such a great nutrition source for adult animals, there would be some bird or some weasel or some, some marsupial that would have learned how to sneak up on buffalo, lactating buffalo, and suck their milk from their teats, or would, would have learned to sneak in the barn when after the pigs have given birth and suck their, their, their milk, right? There's not a single animal on the planet. There is one instance of another, an animal of another species consuming dairy nutrition. It is the tit bird, the blue tit, I think is their name. They're in the UK and used to, back when the milkmen would set off the unhomogenized milk on the front porch, right? And knock on the door, ring the doorbell. Between the time that the, the matron or patron of the house uh, came to get the milk, the blue tit would peck a hole in the aluminum foil cover and eat the milk fat, the cream that had risen to the top, the, the bird there. So there is one instance of an animal of another species that doesn't lactate eating dairy nutrition as an adult, and it was the fat. That's it. There is no example of an animal as an adult eating dairy protein or dairy sugar. There's just no example of that because it's made for baby mammals. It is not optimal for, for an adult mammal or an adult animal. But the milk fat's pretty decent. And so one bird in the UK figured out a way to get to eat the milk fat, which is basically the, the butter off the top, the heavy cream. Yeah. So this is the kind of stuff I sit around and read about. The blue tit. <laughs> All right. Let's see what's going on here. Justin Will 85. Hey, Dr. Barry, I'm Justin from Detroit, Michigan. I'm going to start the carnivore diet this coming Monday, but should I take a multivitamin with it? I don't think so, Justin. You live in Michigan, so you need 5,000 units of vitamin D3 a day just to be safe and uh, buy one that has K2 in it as well. Um, if you're especially, definitely if you're a darker skin tone and you live in Michigan, you definitely need some vitamin D. Uh, and then make sure you're eating plenty of omega-3 rich foods and then get some keto chow daily mineral drops so that you know you're getting the minerals that your body needs. That's it. You don't need a multivitamin. Okay. 
welcome, welcome to the Meditarians. You're going to do great. You're going to love it. Christy says, Dr. Barry, how would you break a 40-day fast? I'm carnivore. I, if I fasted for 40 days, I would break it with a, either some bone broth, a cup of bone broth. I would sip on that because basically after a 40-day fast, your, your gastrointestinal system has went into hibernation mode, right? If it were a computer, it'd be in sleep mode, which is not dangerous or bad, but you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to have a big plate bender and just, you know, eat all the, 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 the pork chops and all the eggs and all the meat. If you do that, you're going to have, uh, you're probably going to throw up. You're going to probably uh, shit your pants or have diarrhea. And you may even develop a few electrolyte abnormalities. I do not recommend that. Have a, one cup of bone broth that's homemade or have one scrambled egg in butter. And then wait 30 minutes, Christy. And give your GI, give that, that's very absorbable, very uh, calm food for your GI system. It's going to let it wake up, start making the enzymes, start making the, the pepsin, start making the uh, trypsin and all the other things that your gastrointestinal system make. And then 30 minutes later, you can have another egg or another cup of bone broth. And then after you've done that two or three times, I mean, it's a 40 day fast. That's a long fast. Maybe after repeating that three times, then you can have a just a very small meal and see what happens. But uh, hopefully, hopefully, if you fasted 40 days, uh, I know you're ready to break that fast. You must be very bored missing your friend food. All right. Thank you for that. Matia says, today is my birthday and I'm 41. I'm in better shape than when I was 20 years old. You, Dr. Barry, gave me a new lease on life and I'll be forever grateful I'm thinking of becoming a Rivero carnivore coach. You are my hero. Love, Matt. Matt, man, that is awesome. Thank you so much. You're going to be a great carnivore coach. Rivero is my friend, Dr. Sean Baker's platform. Uh, you're always welcome in my Patreon if you'd like to join Matt, but, but go coach. Go be a carnivore coach, my friend. Booyah. Well done. Well done. It's Denise, but they call me Mimi. What can I do to help slow digestion? I'm menopausal. Can these be connected? Thanks so much, uh, Dora, you and Nisha. Uh, really, the only slow digestion that's actually real is gastroparesis from uh, years of prediabetes or type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes. If you don't have gastroparesis, then you've probably been told you have slow digestion by some naturopathic guru or something, but you don't. A lot of people are told that they have low stomach acid. They have, you know, if you're taking uh, Nexium or Prevacid, you probably do have low stomach acid. But if you're not taking an acid blocker and you're eating plenty of meat, you definitely don't have low, low stomach acid unless you have a genetic defect, which is super rare. Uh, and you, uh, Denise, Mimi, probably don't have slow digestion. You've just been told that by a guru. Um now, now, fat loss can be slowed by being menopausal or perimenopausal or postmenopausal, but that doesn't mean you have slow digestion. Okay, eat your meat, eat your eggs. Christy Smith, thank you, Dr. Barry. Oh, she's on day thirty-five of her fast right now. You got this, Christy. Uh, I want to know. I want an update on your progress. Like, what's changed in your life, Christy? You can leave it in the comments or you can uh, message me somewhere else. But I really want to know what benefits you got from your 40 day fast. That's freaking amazing. OK, we answered that one. Anna Sexton says, is keto carnivore OK if I have cystic fibrosis with complications of cirrhosis and an enlarged spleen? My yearly lab showed that I am pre-diabetic. Anna, first of all, you're a human being. So you need a proper human diet. But secondly, every single condition you just said is going to either you're going to slow the progression or you're going to reverse the progression of that chronic medical problem with a proper human diet, either keto, ketovore, or carnivore. So why would you not want to eat a proper human diet? 100% you're going to, you're going to, you're going to improve the, the cirrhosis and the pre-diabetes. There's not even a, a, an argument about that. You're probably going to slow down progression of your CF, and you're probably going to have less severe flare-ups of your CF. And then uh, depending on what caused your enlarged bleed, it may or may not improve. It depends on what caused it. 
Thank you for the super chat. Dario, how do I lose the last 10 pounds? I'm stalled for months after losing 130 pounds in eight months with keto. The gym doesn't help. No, nope, Dario, the gym doesn't help. So first of all, let's all congratulate Dario for losing 130 pounds in eight months on a keto diet. Booyah. Thumbs up, Dario. Well done. Now, for all of you guys out there, Let's talk about the last 5, 10, or 20 pounds. The last 10 pounds is a bitch. It is the, the most sticky pounds. That, the, the first 10 pounds came off like that. But the last 10 pounds, and nobody knows for sure why this is, but we think, we opine, we hypothesize that as you get closer to your ideal body weight, and there is such a thing that your body decides, you don't get to decide it, that your body slows down the weight loss, the fat burning, because uh, human beings are by design low-carbohydrate eaters. We should eat a low-carbohydrate diet, but we're also, by design, we are the fattiest of all the primates. A normal body fat percentage for a female human is 15 to 25%, and a normal body fat percentage for a male human is 10 to 20%. So, if you are trying to get below those body fat percentages, that is not normal and unhealthy, and your body will fight you. Okay? It should not be your goal unless you're doing something unnatural like trying to be a, a bodybuilder or a physique athlete, and you're trying to get where people can see the, uh, um, you know, your veins over your pectoralis major or your veins over your rectus abdominis. That's not normal to have that low of a body fat percentage. It's also not healthy, in my opinion. Women need 15 to 25% body fat. Men need 10 to 20% body fat. That is our healthiest uh, mix of, of muscle, bone, tissue, fat. Stop trying to have a 5% body fat. That's not the goal. It's not healthy. It's not normal. And it's hard as hell to get there. So it may be that you've already reached your ideal body weight, Dario, but you're preconceived notion of what your ideal body weight, your body might disagree with you. So you may already be at your ideal body weight. That's why your weight loss is stalled. Just keep that in mind. <clears throat> I already did that one. Sherry says, I have an appointment with an endocrinologist. What will he say when I tell him I'm carnivore? Uh, some, some endocrinologists are going to shit their pants. If you tell them you're carnivore, some are going to say, huh? I mean, you're, you know, you're getting good results. Keep doing what you're doing. And maybe 1% of endocrinologists will say, oh good, I'm a carnivore too. But the vast majority of them are just going to have a, they're going to come undone. When you say I only eat meat and eggs, uh, they're going to flip out. Yeah. And so what a lot of people do, Sherry, instead of saying I eat keto or I eat ketovore or carnivore. They don't tell their doctor that. They say, I eat a whole food diet. I avoid all highly processed food. I, I avoid sugars and grains. I just eat real human food. And leave it at that. And the vast majority of doctors will say, well, that's, that's good. That sounds good. Keep doing that. Because what I just described was a keto diet or a ketovore or carnivore, right? a real ancestrally appropriate whole food diet. I don't eat any processed food whatsoever. All my food has one ingredient. Doctors love trigger phrases like that. An ancestral diet, one ingredient, no processing, no sugar, no, 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 no highly processed grains. Doctors love that. So tell them that, Sherry. You don't have to say the word carnivore, to be honest. Unless you just want to have a discussion or have a fight, then tell them you eat carnivore. Uh, Boink 800 says fake food causes cancer. This is probably true. Boink 800 is probably exactly right that fake highly processed food causes cancer. Just like we know that smoking causes cancer. There's no ifs, ands, or buts, right? The epidemiological uh, research showed a 20 to 30 times greater risk, not 1% like red meat. Like it was obvious smoking causes cancer. I think highly processed food causes cancer as well. Highly processed sugars and grains and vegetable seed oils, I 100% believe they cause cancer. But Harvard's not going to do that research because they're sparse, they're partially sponsored by Kellogg's and Kraft Heinz 
and Mondelez, right? And so these these guys make billions of dollars making highly processed foods made out of sugars, grains, and seed oils. So they have no interest in sponsoring that research. Also, uh, Harvard and Tufts and all these other big nutrition universities get a lot of sponsorship from the big pharmaceutical houses. And trust me, the, the pharmaceutical houses, Eli Lilly, they do not want you to eat a low-carb diet because if, you, if every adult human in, in the United States started eating a low-carb diet, there would not be a single type 2 diabetic who needed insulin. And Eli Lilly would go bankrupt because there's not enough type 1 diabetics to keep them in business. They make they they pay the bills with the, with the insulin they sell to type one diabetics. The profit they make to give to the shareholders comes from the insulin that's injected by type two diabetics who are still making insulin in their pancreas. Eli Lilly has no interest in you eating keto, ketovore, carnivore, because you will literally kill their billion dollars in profit if you do that. So they're not interested in that. They're not going to sponsor any research that shows that a low carbohydrate uh, keto diet will help a type two diabetic get off insulin. Do you think they would ever sponsor that research? If you owned Eli Lilly, would you sponsor that research? No, because that would be dumb. You would be taking money out of your own pocket. Their profit model is built on type two diabetics eating so many carbohydrates that they need to inject insulin. And so they're going to, they're going to say things like all oh, things in moderation, which is a meme that allows you to have a little bit of cupcake and a little bit of pancake and a little bit of cornbread and a little bit of yeast roll and, and then inject a little bit of insulin. Everybody profits except for you and your health and, and you suffer and your health suffers. But uh, Eli Lilly's fine with all things in moderation. They're fine with the, my plate because there's so many servings of whole grains. They're fine with the ADA diet that, that has fruit smoothies as desserts on their website. They're fine with that because they know as long as people are drinking lots of fruit smoothies and eating lots of whole grain bread, all the type 2 diabetics will be injected lots of insulin and they'll be making billions of dollars. So every day before you put food in your mouth, decide who are you eating for? Are you eating for you and your health? So you can be around your family and your friends, or are you eating for the profits of Eli Lilly and Kraft Heinz? And then apparently the American Diabetes Association. Is that who you're eating for? Or are you eating for your best health? I think that's a valid question. If you're a carb addict, look in the mirror every morning and say, who the hell are you going to eat for today? Are you going to eat for yourself and your family? Or are you going to eat for Eli Lilly and, and, and for Kellogg's and Kraft? Who are you eating for? Because if you eat the standard American crap, you're feeding their coffers. They're making profit off you. You're a profit cattle. That's what you are. But if you eat real human food, you're going to get healthier and you're going to cut into their profits and they're not going to appreciate that. Think about that. Think about the power in that. The power that you have over their purse strings. Right? They may be all haughty and uppity and be like, we're Harvard School of Public Health. We're Eli Lilly, uh, brought to you by Pfizer. You ever heard that before? If all you guys ate a proper human diet and lived a proper human lifestyle, you would choke the life out of their profits. How powerful is that to know you have that power, that you could literally stand up and start doing this instant? But are, are you ready? Are you ready to do that? I don't know. Only you know if you're ready. Yeah, Evan, my definition, and I'm, I'm writing a book called The Proper Human Diet, which is hopefully will be out by Christmas. Uh, uh, adios mio, please, maybe by Christmas. And uh, my spectrum of a proper human diet is all the way from carnivores close to zero grams of carbs as you can get, all the way up to for some young metabolically healthy people, they can and of some uh, genetic uh, predispositions, they can eat up to 100 grams a day of real, whole one ingredient, real proper human diet carbs, right? Like broccoli, like nuts, like blueberries. But some of us can't. we got to eat 50 total grams or less, or we get fatter and more pre-diabetic. Some have to eat 20. 
Some have to eat 10 and some have to be carnivores. And that's why the proper human diet is a spectrum because depending, you know, when I was 20, hundred percent, I could eat a hundred total grams a day, ate lots of meat and eggs. And then I would have never gotten obese. I would have never developed prediabetes like I did. And then as I got older, I could just naturally dial down my carbohydrate intake knob down to 50, down to 30, down to 20. And then, and so that's one of the concepts I talk about in the book is the carbohydrate intake knob. It's the most powerful dietary intervention that any human can employ. If you're overweight, if you're pre-diabetic, diabetic, if you're having any kind of chronic medical conditions, eat fewer carbohydrates. Turn down the carbohydrate intake knob. So, yeah, uh, from zero grams to 100 grams, that's the proper human diet spectrum. Trucking with diabetes. Man, that's a that's a subpopulation that would benefit so much from keto, ketable carnivore is over-the-road truckers. Any, any driver that's over the road that you just basically sit on your ass for hours a day, and that's your job. Keto is the way. Ketovore, carnivore. Trucking with diabetes said, I found a doctor that's all for keto and work, work on a plan to get me off all medication. Good doctors like a good mechanic worth every penny. 100% agree. It's a great analogy. A good doctor is, 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 is as valuable as a good mechanic. And if any doctors are offended by that statement, then you don't know how valuable a good mechanic is. Because that's, that's a compliment. Coming from a trucker, that's a compliment. You should take that and smile and say, thank you very much. 100%. 100%. Uh, Derek says, could you recommend a good primary doctor here in, hmm, you didn't say where you're at. So I have a YouTube video called How to Find a Low Carb Doctor Near You. And in the show notes, there are five or six uh, websites that you can put your zip code in no matter where you're at in the world. And it'll tell you the closest low carb friendly doctors near you. Okay. Now that doesn't mean that, that, that it's not an endorsement. I'm not necessarily saying they're great doctors, but they are low carb woke. They understand the concepts. They understand insulin. They understand the stuff I talk about mostly on my YouTube videos. So uh, how to find a low carb doctor near you and then put your zip code into the websites. Alberto, that's not a question I'm going to discuss, Alberto. Ask your, ask your conscience if you should have asked that. 1010H, hey, thanks for the super chat in yen, 370 yen. Thank you so much. I don't know that I've ever been given yen before. Thank you. Laura, everybody listen to this. This is important. Laura Phillips, I lost 120 pounds, but since the C virus, I've gained back 30. Now, what other diet have you done in your life where you lost 120 pounds and then went off the diet, but you only gained back 20 or 30 or 40? That's keto. That's the power. Because once you know what you know, once you've heard that bell ring, you never go back to eating all the crap. You might fall off the wagon and you might gain back 10, 20, 30, 40, but you never gain back all 120. It's, it's just unheard of on a proper human diet. And that's not yo-yo dieting. You just fell off the wagon temporarily, Laura. Get back on it, and you that 30 pounds will be back off before you know it. Oh, guys, I've, I have, uh, I've went over the hour, haven't I? I've, I've been on a roll. Thanks for hanging out with me so long. Let's get, let's get one more question. Hey, look, there's Nisha loves it. Oh. My beautiful pregnant wife. Hmm. You should go to the mailbox. Okay, I'll go to the mailbox. <laughs> okay, so if I was not able to answer your question today, become a patron on patreon.com. There's a link in the show notes. It's a super easy sign up. They protect your information. They do not sell your information. It is a private protected community where you have direct access to me and you can ask me your questions and I will answer you. How cool is that? I can't be your doctor. It's not medical advice. But I will tell you my opinion about any question you ask in my Patreon tribe. So become a tribe member. This is Dr. Barry. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time.